So I'm now going to go into the very important point of alignment and things need to be aligned and when I deal with things I may want to group them and move them together and so forth. So let's start with um, going to the view tab over here and in the view tab I have three tools that are very um, useful. So one is the ruler and I have the ruler on over here and you can see that if I took it off that these things would show um, kind of the uh, distances between the horizontal and the vertical directions on my screen. But to make a better orientation, and this is very useful for drawing things, I um, can put on the grid lines. So then I have this kind of grid that shows me pretty much, uh, you know, what thing, you know, what the horizontal and the vertical alignment are. And I can actually add these things that are guides, which is this uh, grid line and this grid line that I can move around. And then I can really give myself an orientation line of where to put things and make the, sure that things across, if I need to, across slides and so forth are um, at the same alignment. But um, actually the built-in tools that PowerPoint has are really useful for doing all kinds of alignment and they're under the home tab um, we have this arrange button so under the arrange button we have uh, two groups over here which I'll discuss later but uh, below I have this align one and align objects has also many tools inside and the tools are align left align center align right align top align middle align bottom distribute horizontally distribute vertically align to slide align selected objects so I have all of these types of things and and um, they're so important to me that I've actually put uh, most of them, maybe all of them, in my quick access toolbar. And I use them all the time. And in, in addition to that, I put the align objects tool so I can select them if I, in case I don't uh, see in the icon, which is the one I want. So let's uh, try to understand what that is. So I take um, some sort of a shape. Let's say I take a, a box over here and I make a box. Okay, uh, I want to show you some other things while I'm making the box. So I took this box over here um, and I'm taking another box. If I hold down shift while I'm making the box, I'm going to make it a square. So that's really nice. So all I did is I held down shift. In addition to that, if I hold down shift and I pull on it, I cannot change the, um, the aspect ratio so it stays a box. Same thing over here. If I hold down shift and I pull, I do not change the aspect ratio. If I'm not holding down shift, I can move this thing around. But if I'm holding down shift, I've got the axis ratio stuck over there. Um, similarly, if I hold down control, it's going to uh, change the orientation symmetrically on both sides. So that's shift and that's um, control when I'm resizing boxes. But now it's very important for me to have these two boxes um, at the same alignment right next to, you know, right on the same uh, bottom line together. So I can just take this second box and I can move it down to the grid line that I put over here. Let's say I wanted to move them to a different place. So I move the grid line down here then I can move one to the grid line. It kind of snaps to it. And the second one to the grid line also snaps to it. Well, let's move this one over to the left grid line as well. Uh, got it there. But this took a lot of uh, futzing around, kind of. I could have just done it with my, you know, built-in grid lines over here. Um, there's also these dynamic guides that kind of show me when these two are centered together or they're aligned at the top or the bottom. And they're really, really useful and save me a lot of time. But um, sometimes you don't understand what they are, especially if I have a lot of different shapes over here. So um, let's say that I have now uh, maybe a, another box over here and uh, another one, you know, over here or something and I start wanting to you know move it to the right place you see these dynamic grid lines are jumping all over the place sometimes it gets really hard to to make sense of it so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use the align tools to get this the way I want to so um, I can go over here and use the shift button I hold down the shift button and I select multiple shapes and with multiple shapes selected, I can do all kinds of things that I have in the alignment toolbar. So again, I'll just show the whole um, uh, array of options. So I can align them to the top. And now, as you can see with my grid line, I can prove it to you that they're all aligned at the same place. Or I can go and I can, here I have uh, just the aligned bottom one. I can align them at the bottom. Um, and now, again, with my grid I can show you that they are all aligned at the bottom. I could have gone and done something else. I could have accidentally maybe hit align to the right. 
and now they get the whole um, right thing. I can undo that, of course. Okay, and um, that's really nice. So that allows me to align things, and it's really important. Try to make everything you want aligned. Um, maybe I want that these have different sizes, but I have the center of them. Let's say I had some text in all of them, and I want the text to be all centered. So let's put some text inside these different shapes over here. Um, and uh, Okay, and now I want the text to all appear aligned, and they're all at the center of this shape because that's how they were chosen um, in the formatting. I can show you how to change that as well. And now what I'm going to do is I have this tool over here. Let's open the whole toolbar. Uh, align middle is going to put them all at the middle. So now all of the middle parts are aligned. All of these little dots are at the same place. So that's really nice. By the way, let's say I want to now spread these so I can take this guy and I don't want to change the alignment. I want him to stay in this on the same horizontal line. So I can hold down shift. Again, I'm holding down shift and moving this and you see that I cannot move up and down. I can move up and down or right and left, but I can't move in any diagonal. So I keep my same orientation. That's by holding shift. If I'm not holding shift, you see it's going all over the place. Okay, um, so let's uh, so so that can help me kind of align them so they have a similar distance between them. But is this the same distance as this? I don't know, and I really would want them to have same you know equal distance between them to be spread nicely. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of them again. Okay, I didn't have to do that. I could have gone over here and selected all of them. Usually you have to start outside the slide or somewhere where there's nothing else to select. So I selected all of them over here. And now again, I'll go back to my alignment uh, uh, tool. And there is a button that says um, distribute horizontally. I always get mixed up between align middle and distribute horizontally. Um, you see the different names over here, but when I'm looking at the tools I have over here, I always sit there and look at it for a few seconds because you see over here is distribute horizontally and here is align middle. They really look similar, but um, they're both very useful. Anyway, so if I hit distribute horizontally, as you can see now, the distance between all the shapes is the same. That will also appear with my, uh, with my dynamic toolbar over here. You can see that when I get to the right position, it showed that um, kind of red line going up and down. That's when I was distributed. But it's very hard to tell, and it kind of showed the arrows. Do you see the arrows that were under here? It showed that I was at the perfect distribution, and that's really useful. It's just hard to tell, and the tools will make sure that it really works. Obviously, I have the exact same tools for uh, vertical orientation, so let's move these guys around over here. Uh, I can select them all, and I can say, um, let's say I want to align them in the middle uh, vertically, the center, okay? Um, and now I want to have equal space between them. We see, obviously, there is not equal space between them. Some of them are overlapping, some of them aren't, but there's actually, there is enough margin to put some space between them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, again, grab this and distribute vertically, and boom, I have exactly the amount of, you know, the equal amount of space between them, and that's great. If I just take one single thing and I want it to be in the center of the screen, I can go and I can pull it, and at some point it will tell me that it's at the center of the screen with one of these dynamic toolbars, but I can just go and say distribute horizontally, um, uh, and when it's with the screen, it will. when, when I have only one thing selected, it will do it um, relative to the screen. So again, the distribute vertically is going to put it at the vertical center of the screen. Okay, so this is uh, alignment, and really, uh, you should always use alignment. When things are a bit out of alignment, it looks very unprofessional. So make sure you are doing all of this. So now that we have all the alignments down, Pat, what I want to show you is uh, the issue with uh, ordering and grouping. So when we put these boxes over here, we they're actually see-through, so we don't actually know which one is kind of on top of the other. But if we start coloring them, so I will color this one a certain color by um, clicking, you know, some sort of a fill. And I can, and then I'll click another one, let's say this one by clicking another fill, and this one by clicking another fill and this one by clicking another fill, I can see that there's some order between the different boxes, right? We can see that this box is probably on top of everybody. This one and this one are behind it. We can't see which is, uh, okay, this one's right behind it, then this one, then this one. And I can play around with that ordering. Again, going to the Arrange button over here, and I have Bring to Front, Send to Back, Bring Forward, Send Backward. So Bring to Front will immediately take the thing that's selected and bring it to the front of the screen. 
I can also use the send forward and send backwards just to move it one step backwards, one step backwards without going all the way to the back of the screen. I can just move it one by one ahead to see what I want to cover up and what I don't want to cover up. Uh, another thing that I can do is group things. So um, right now, if I want to move all these, um, I would have to probably do something like select all of them and move them or something like that. Or what if I just want to select these two? It's hard to get them. I want to select all three of them. How do I do it? So what would be a better idea would be like, uh, for example, to select these two guys and make a group out of them. So a group is, again, inside the arrange. I can go group or I could have pressed control G. Now pay attention. Once you group things, they're automatically sent to the front of the screen, the top layer um, of the screen, which I didn't necessarily want to do. Actually, in this case, I cannot move the, uh, the brown one to be in front of this lighter brown one and the gray one to be in back because the group um, moves as one. I can, however, um, do ordering between inside the group. So, for example, if I take this, uh, I can select one of the items inside. Let's select the darker one over here. And it is right now in front of the gray one. And let's say I wanted the gray one inside. Uh, well, I could have uh, sent that one to the back and it will be in, in the back area of the group. Um, if I can't actually um, move between, well, let's say I have four items in here and I, uh, I group them all together. These are all grouped together. And I want to toggle between them. I can actually use the tab key to toggle between them. Um, the tab key is actually very um, nice because it toggles between all of the different shapes and things that I have on the screen. So um, I have another shape over here. And let's say I had a line or something like that. When I'm going to um, use the tab key, it's going to just jump between the different items that I have on the screen. And you see it goes into the group and I can move them around and do different things with them, even delete something from a group and so forth. I can, uh, so now when I want to align, if I align a group with another shape, it's going to take the, say, uh, let's say align the bottom, it's going to align with the bottommost part of the group. So um, the group is all one. Uh, I will often want to ungroup the shapes after I dealt with them and so forth. So then I can either um, do right click and group ungroup or if I, I could have just done control shift G or selected it from the arrange ungroup and so forth. So uh, grouping and ungrouping is a real nice thing that allows us to kind of take care of uh, several items together without um, accidentally moving them. Um, also to just easily select all of them to make duplications and stuff like that. So grouping and ungrouping is a very useful type of a thing. It also works well for different animations when we're talking about regular PowerPoint.